Hello, everybody. Uh, people sometimes point out how detailed my work tends to be, so I thought I'd share how I add in that detail and why it's remarkably easy to do. I also have some free stuff to give away, including a free brush set, so stay tuned. For those of you who don't know, I'm Abby Sparza and I have 10 years of creative compositing experience with a focus on fine art portraits. Today I'm covering what I'm going to call a glitter effect. But it really has all different kinds of uses, including dewy skin, wet skin, scaly skin, other things that aren't skin, uh, but anything that would be high shine. Uh, because all that we're creating today is just specular highlight, right? Uh, the brightest point on a shiny object. For this image, I was really trying to go for a Pat McGrath video vibe, if you've ever seen those advertisements. And which brings us to Optics by Boris FX. I've talked about Optics before, a Photoshop plugin, and the only one I like, uh, with a slew of different effects, uh, my favorite being its lighting effects. But Optics just got a massive update for 2022, improving and adding in a bunch of new features, including a slicker UI, which I very much appreciate, and particle effects. And what's even cooler is Boris FX X gave us 20 licenses of optics to give away completely free to the first 20 viewers that snagged them. Just follow the directions down in the description. But don't worry if you missed out on the freebies. I have a coupon code for 20% off optics down there as well. I do get a small kickback from it, but optics is the only plugin that I personally use and I do genuinely recommend. I always tend to refer to optics as everything you want the Photoshop filters to be, but now it's like having a whole Hollywood level SFX studio inside of Photoshop. But let's move on to creating that actual glitter effect and then we can spice it up at the end using optics. So this whole effect is based on layering different glitter brushes over top one another. I'll make these brushes available, uh, the exact ones I'm using, to download to save us all some time. Most of them are just the default round brush anyway with different settings creating different highlight densities. One is a custom brush but it's just made of several dots to give us a, a higher coverage area but with a lower density of dots. While using all these brushes, you'll want to adjust the settings as needed, if needed. Um, they're all just really good starting points. But let's grab that low density brush uh, to start with. The size is going to depend on your image and how fine you want the glitter texture to appear. And let's create a new layer, setting it to overlay, and then setting our brush color to white. The trick to texture is remembering that a brighter area means go up in brush size, while in darker areas you're going to want to go down in brush size. More light means more detail, while shadows mean less. The detail will also be softer in those shadows. Using a pen tablet will make this easier, but it's not required. A mouse user will just have to utilize the eraser brush more and change their brush size more often as well. Either way, you're going to use the eraser brush to taper and soften darker areas and blend out streaky lines. You'll notice I'll often lay down a ton of texture, then erase, then lay down more, then erase again. This will give you a nice smooth transition from bright, mid, and dark areas. You'll want to retain shape and structure, but avoid streaks. Uh, for this initial layer though, we really don't have to worry. This layer works more as a guide for um, the more prominent glitter coming up. It also creates transitional areas so that brighter glitter uh, doesn't feel too harsh. But if you want a super fine glitter effect, and you won't be adding as much glittery highlight over these areas, then you'll want to spend more time on it. I'll switch brushes as necessary. The low density brush is excellent for larger areas while the high density brushes are better for those thinner areas like the neck here. Where you place the glitter also depends on what effect you want the glitter to actually give. Is the glitter on her skin or a part of her skin Edward Cullen style? Since I want all of her skin to seem glittery, I'm going to add texture everywhere, including the uh, darker areas, even though it'll be very subtle. And once we have a good amount of that uh, light laid down, we'll want to create another layer, a set to overlay, and repeat the same exact steps only with a dark color. Opt for a darker color of whatever it is you're painting on, in this case blue. 
Uh, adding a darker texture underneath that lighter surface will uh, give more grit to the glitter, like actual dimension, um, so it appears less flat. This will also help the shadows from getting lost under the lighter glitter. And the more texture you want, the darker you'll want this underlying layer to be. Almost like the individual pieces of glitter are actively casting a shadow. And you can even try different layer modes, like multiply to create a darker, more intense texture. This is really one of those effects that'll look bad before it starts to look good, and it'll look better and better the more you work on it. That goes for the upcoming steps as well. So if you're laying down dots and you're just like, this just looks like a bunch of dots, um, just add more. This effect literally came from me being desperate to either hide some imperfection or just not knowing what to do and deciding to cover something with glitter. Um, it's a real hard effect to mess up since its job is to effectively hide screw ups. <laughs> uh, when recording things, I do have to go kind of fast, even when the screencast is sped up, uh, so I don't leave you with large chunks of silence that I can't figure out what to say during. Um, so I'm just going to say that'll do for now. And you can always come back and beef up some areas or tone others down. That's why I recommend doing all of the different sizes and shades of texture on separate layers so you can come back and tinker when you need to. But let's move on to our main glittery highlights by creating a new layer, keeping it set to normal. Let's grab that low density brush and we'll keep it larger than the initial uh, brush we previously used, but still keep this round of highlights relatively small to medium sized. Uh, to keep things basic, let's stick to white, which will give us a very silver glittery effect. But once you're bored of this, uh, you can try different colors or even different glitter grit shapes. And we're going to do exactly what we did with the highlights on the uh, overlay layer, only being much more aware of the density and size of our texture. Just like before, the grain will be larger in bright areas and smaller in darker areas, but overall there will be less in the darker areas since we're painting with a flat white. So density is now kind of the name of the game, right? Uh, larger, high density particles in light areas and little to no particles in those darker areas. Mid value areas will be between the two. However, don't be afraid of adding tiny little flecks of light here and there in those shadows. I think it adds a nice little bit of detail. And again, helps things from looking flat. And remember, you can always use the eraser brush to tone down overly bright areas and be extra careful about avoiding those streaky lines, especially with the flat white brushes. And you can also use the other brushes to get into the nooks and crannies and paint those glittery edges. Don't overthink it though, we really are just painting dots. Once you're happy with that layer of glitter, go ahead and create another layer and repeat those same steps but with a larger grain. You'll paint even less of the larger grain in the mid and dark points while really kind of hammering it on those highlights, uh, still keeping smooth transitions while retaining the shapes of the subject or object you're painting on. Uh, so when I first did this image, uh, kind of my tester image, I accidentally made the hand appear swollen because I wasn't careful about preserving uh, the shape and angles in the hand, which has a lot of them, especially between the fingers and um, the weird tendon that's over your knuckles. <laughs> anyway, I focused all of the light on the top middle of the hand, uh, so it looked rounded and like she was stung by a bee. If this ends up happening to you, remember you can return to your other layers and adjust them as needed. Usually it's just a matter of adding more transition um, 
or adding in more harsh lines or bringing in more shadows. We just don't want random uh, blobs of light um, or overly rounded bits of highlight. You're going to create a new layer anytime you jump to a notably larger grain size, but don't worry about it if you accidentally paint small grain on a larger grain layer or vice versa. It's just a convenience thing. If you keep them separate, then you don't have to worry about accidentally erasing the grain you like when you mess up the grain you just laid down. Um, I almost always forget to switch layers at some point, and at worst, it's mildly annoying. However, we do want to make sure we're on a new layer for the super big pieces of glitter because we want to hit them with a semi-hard eraser brush. This will give them that half lit like they're at an angle look because the glitter isn't perfectly flat uh, most of the time. And you can of course add a bit of shine to them as well using an overlay layer, soft light layer, or color dodge layer. Um, any shine will do. I like a six point star shine myself, uh, but simple light blooms will work just fine. Optics is going to be our secret shine weapon here. And while all of our focus was on our blue subject uh, during this video, it's the same exact technique when painting on lighter skin tones. And you can also do pinpoint glitter effects like on the subject's eyes and cheeks. I just made a super dark blue layer set to multiply below layers of lighter glitter. Laying down that glitter just like we did on a full blown body. And that finishes our glittery skin texture, but we want to add both shine and glow to our subjects and bring some glitter and bokeh particles to the foreground. So let's convert our whole image into a smart object and go to Filter, Boris FX, Optics 2022. Uh, by using a smart object, we can adjust our optics filters anytime we need to, but we can also edit our main image by double clicking that smart object, making our adjustments, saving, and then optics will update according to the changes we made to our smart object. So typically I'll find that you'll want to add your light effects before adding particle effects, uh, since the light effects are a bit um, lighter as far as uh, GPU and CPU power goes. Uh, but let's play with some of the particle effects first, and I'm even going to switch to a blank document so you can really see them more clearly, uh, just to get a feel for how they work. So under the particle illusions, you'll see several categories. I like to go to PI Complete, which is just the entire library of particle effects. And there are tons of presets here, I already went through and picked some of my favorites. The time setting is how you can scrub through different points in movement. Uh, keep in mind that optics is rendering this frame by frame and the particles are generated individually, uh, so slowdown is to be expected. If you've ever had to scrub through a beefy Premiere Pro timeline, you'll understand. The parameters panel holds all of your go-to parameters and settings, uh, like number, size, and master scale being my most used, uh, and of course, time. If you want to edit things on a more granular scale, you'll want to launch the Particle Illusions panel, but I suggest playing with the presets and the more base settings first. They're not base, there's still a lot there, um, but they're much more straightforward. Let's return to our subject and add some of those light effects and of course some particles as well. Uh, first, let's go to Glow under the Light tab. Let's, like, like I said, let's get our light effects out of the way first. Uh, the default glow is already a great start, but we can increase the threshold and reduce the brightness to make it a bit more subtle. When using optics, I just like to play with settings and mix and match different filters and effects. Just kind of slide things around and see what I like. And that looks good for now, so let's create a new layer and add a favorite of mine, a glint. Uh, two in fact. One for more of that uh, Pat McGrath slash 80s glamour glow. And then a second to create a lovely sharp glint of sparkle on um, all the more prominent glitter specks. Now 
Now into particle illusion. We can add some environmental glitter using the floating dust preset. We want to bring down the particle size and number to make it a fine glitter. And then we can scrub through the time to see what movement we like. And we can even bring this filter below our lighting filters just to see if they catch any of those glint effects. Uh, but I don't think they're bright enough. Optics does work much like Photoshop, uh, having layers, layer masks, uh, you can adjust opacity, even layer modes. Only, in fact, it's kind of slightly better because it has the super handy before and after slider. Let's add one last new layer and bring in these dot flashes, which we'll repurpose uh, for some bokeh by rotating it 90 degrees, enlarging it, and then adjusting the particle number and size. Scrubbing through the time and playing with the other settings to see what looks best. So I can honestly play endlessly in optics. It's a great way to pretend to be productive when you have a thousand more things to do, but just don't want to do them. And with optics, it's really nice because if you want something quick and easy, it has tons of presets and simple to use settings. Or if you really want to get in there, you can lift up the uh, digital hood and tinker away. But that's it for today. Uh, don't forget to check that description below for 20% off optics. Uh, and if you want more highlights and more free brushes, check out my how to paint easy tears video. I'm Abby Sparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.